does seem to me that we're living through a very elementary personalization of media. In the same way as the screens are becoming more personalized, so the subject matter will become more and more personal. I'm reminded of Andy Warhol's quote, in the future, everybody will be famous for 15 minutes. But just before he died, he changed it. He said, in 15 minutes, everybody will be famous. And that's exactly what I believe. I think that what you're going to see is um, a shift to interest in real people's lives. The new star of reality television is the everyday hero that is put into you know, dramatic situations um, and, and has to face them day to day. A significant trends towards life empowerment in regards to content, whether that's physical, spiritual, um, whether that's in, in a family environment. Paradoxically, while the industry has started to become more and more personalized. The response has been to make bigger and bigger spectacles, which require me to watch in real time. A kind of very, very primitive fireside gathering. People tune in to something that feels like a bit of an event, something that feels a bit special. So the challenge then for broadcast is to kind of make everything feel a bit special. You know, the first eps um, of a new series, big new reality shows. Programmers aren't stupid. They program the evening of viewing around the notion that you get home, you, f you feed the family, you watch the telly. That remains the way we all live, and that will continue to remain the way most of us live. Primetime television is going to become even more valuable than it has been in the past. And this is because it represents the only single place where what remains of a mainstream audience can be aggregated. If something is big enough, i.e. like an American Idol or MasterChef, then there's going to be a huge appetite for it beyond the television show. The broadcaster and the creator is always looking for more and more content that, that can be pushed into different mediums. Everybody's effectively trying to develop projects that, that become brands uh, in a 360 degree sense. All smart producers and uh, network and studio executives you know, will think about what the transmedia opportunities of these new shows you know, will be, because this is what helps to spark the audience's interest in the show. This idea of extended shelf life is really important. There is this long tail um, effect in entertainment that's happening, and I think networks can tap into that. You have the ability to reach different types of audiences, to reach them in different ways, to repurpose content that you've already shot and serve it up in new and different ways. So content that provides embedded solutions is a huge trend for Gen Ys. What does that look like? Well, first of all, the rise of edutainment definitely serves that purpose. The idea being with so many things to watch and consume, if I can also learn something to boot, that's not a bad thing. The idea of shopping while you're watching is something where I think we've just scratched the surface. If you are creating a show, for example, a Gossip Girl, and strategically placed fashion items that really make sense with the characters and really make sense with the plot line, well, quite frankly, why not? And I think that now that consumers would be able to potentially click on those items or tag them and put them away for later to go look into and maybe purchase, it's just kind of functional. If people want to shop, people want to be entertained. If they can do both at the same time, it's not a bad thing. You know, in the future, you're going to see more and more brands really becoming integrated you know, into the content and underwriting uh, the actual programming. If you look at the music industry even, you know, the record label struggled, but brands stepped in, and now Nike is producing songs and, and sponsoring different artists to produce albums, and there's no reason why what producers are doing right now couldn't be further supplemented by brand sponsorships, so on and so forth. But I don't think that content needs to be limited to just a traditional screen anymore. And if you could pick up a product, um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, click on that particular product and watch a documentary about the farmers involved in creating that product. So I think increasingly entertainment is also going to be located in in the physical world through geotagging and augmented reality. People want to be impressed and sort of mesmerized and, and feel a sense of wonder. And, and that is what Transmedia is doing now. They're impressing people with projections on a, on a fountain in Las Vegas or messages recorded on your phone when you're sleeping. You know, a lot of things that just sort of feel supernatural and fantastic. And I think the future of transmedia, the future of participatory experiences, how broadcast meets online and mobile, uh, will be more layered, more interesting stories. Do I think people are going to continue to make great stuff because human beings fundamentally want to, you know, have connection and talk about what it means to be human and, 
and what this experience is like to walk around on this earth? Yes. I don't think anybody has to be concerned about, you know, great stories coming from all corners of the planet. Just give me what I want to watch.